So, in our previous demonstrations, I have gone over different ways to start modeling in Blender, and it's really just scratching the surface. But what I wanted to do uh, today is kind of show you another way to kind of start an object in Blender um, that might work better for some of you, depending upon what the object is, um, especially if it's got a very complicated shape. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a person or something, I'll just usually start with two legs and, and, and go from there. But a lot of times what you can do is you can actually just go in and, um, and start with an outline. It's, it's really simple. So I'm going to take a design from somebody in class. It was, I was looking at the sketches, actually, and I was thinking, I should do this. Um, and so I'm just going to take one of the designs. I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to delete that. Um, let's get our... Um, thing here so it's pretty close to the center and I'm just going to add um, I'm just going to add a plane um, you know which is just a simple flat object like this okay and I'm just going to go in there and what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to I went into edit mode and I'm just going to delete all the vertices okay there we go um, um, or actually you know what's even better is not even to bother deleting them but just start to manipulate them um, and, and, and add them. And what I'm going to use more than anything else is the extrude um, uh, function, which is where, if you remember from the last demo, it's where you can add edges, you can extrude edges, you can extrude all sorts of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete one of these, and we're going to make a key. It's kind of what we're, what we're starting. I should grab that drawing just so that I can kind of look at it and, and see. And I think you'll immediately see how this could be very advantageous. So I'm just going to start with my, my points. And what's really cool is you can, you know, um, especially if you, you set it up so that you're looking straight down, OK, uh, on something, and you get rid of all the perspective, um, now you can just actually hit the G key and just grab it and move it. And if you're looking straight down, what's really nice about this is it won't move it um, up or down in the Z axis at all. Um, as long as your perspective is literally straight down, so you just hit that 7 key on the number keypad, um, and you're looking straight down, you can just move it around and grab it with the G key, and you won't move it up or down in the Z axis, uh, which is a danger whenever you're slightly off or something, you, you grab it, it, it goes into a, a different area. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about, um, uh, the, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the mirroring modifier or anything like that, because in this case it's really not going to help me. Um, a, a, a key is actually very asymmetrical, um, <clears throat> and if I'm careful and I use the grids, um, I, I should be able to come up with something that's pretty darn good. So now once I'm ready to start, I've deleted a bunch of points. I mean, I just started with four, I've deleted, deleted two of them. So I'm just going to hit the E key, and now I can extrude. And you'll notice that I'm kind of trying to stick with um, the grid for now. And then I can adjust things later on to make this a little bit more even, at least, um, in this portion of the, uh, the model. And I'm literally just hitting E and then left-clicking. And now, I'm, and, and, and now, right here, this is why I, I, I need to do it, is because I have this um, really complicated shape for the teeth of the key. And, and this is why I want to start this way instead of um, building it maybe, say, out of a cube or something like that. Um, it becomes really hard sometimes to do, to do that. And I'm just following the sketch. It's in front of me almost perfectly as perfectly as I can. And so that's where it's important to have a good sketch is so that you, you know, kind of know, like, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, I mean, it's not to say that you can't make changes along the way. Of course you can. Almost done here. There we go. 
And now this side of the key is just going to be nice and straight here. Maybe to right about there. And then I'll do a little notch just like before. We'll play with that notch. Oops, now I don't want to extrude that last bit where I'm going to kind of um, I'm going to uh, connect those in just a second. Um, <clears throat> so then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, the easiest thing is I'm just going to right click and extrude another point and then I'm going to delete the edge. It's kind of an awkward, whoops. Why did that work? Delete the edge. There we go. Because I want to make a hole in the middle. So G key allows me to kind of grab that and actually let's put a, let's make it there. So now once I've done all this, I want to close both my shapes. So I'm going to right click on two points and hit the F key to fill them. See? F key to fill. So now what I've got is you can see I've just kind of got this flat representation of what the key um, is going to look like. Now the important thing is I need to actually fill the inside of this object to make basically the flat bottom part of this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now with such a complicated object this can be rather difficult. Um, <clears throat> but it, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, so let me just select all. Let's just see what happens if I hit F. And you can kind of see how it, it just fills everything, right? But we want this hole in the middle gone here. So I'm going to switch to face mode. I'm going to select that face and I'm going to hit delete. And I'm just going to say delete only the face. Ah. Hmm. Wasn't expecting that. Only faces. Didn't do it very well there. All right, we'll have to worry about that in a, in a second. I think, I think I know what the problem is. And the problem is that these aren't connected to this at all. So let's um, just delete the faces again. We'll go back to vertice mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a couple of these. And Now what should happen, theoretically, once I connect, and I'm trying to connect these in a symmetrical manner so that they're all the same across the, from the, um, from each side to the next. Oops, I forgot that there. So now what I should be able to do is fill, and then I should be able to go to faces and click on this one and delete just that face. There we go. So now we've got a hole. So that was a little odd. I had to, you know, finagle that a little bit. But now watch this. This is what's really cool. So I've got a really complicated outline and I can just hit the A key, select them all. And now I'm going to hit the E key again and extrude. And you can kind of see now I've basically got the basics of a key. Now, you know, there's a lot of stuff here that um, I still need to work on, like the channels uh, of the key and the fact that part of this is going to be a lot thicker in, on one side and then on the other it will be like here on the edges it's going to be a lot thinner. So, you know, what I would probably end up doing is, is creating a, a whole, like I would probably honestly um, take the face here and I would probably delete only that face and kind of open this up. And then I would start extruding again. So go back to my vertices. <clears throat> and I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit E. And I'm going to left click immediately. And then I'm going to move this out. Okay. And bring that to about, say, there. I've got to think ahead of myself a little bit. If I want to channel down the middle, what I really need is I need three vertices, don't I? I need two at the top and then one that's going to form the valley. So then I'll hit E again, <clears throat> left click, and I'm going to bring it over just a little bit. Then E again, left click, bring that over a little bit. Um, and then I want a little valley over here too. So then um, E, left click, bring that over, 
E, left click, bring that over. That should be able to do it. Now, some of you are going, what did he just do? So let me tell you, one, two, three, four, five extrusions. So I'm going to go over here, let's just do the same thing. E, left click, one. E, left click, two. E, left click, three. E, left click, four. E, left click, five. The reason why I left click is so that I don't move it accidentally up or down. I left click, lock it in place, and then I use the arrows to move it up or down. Now I'm going to connect these. F, 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 and lastly, to here. <clears throat> so now, can I get all of these. Now it's important when you're doing this, make sure you don't select the uh, ones at the bottom. Let's see if this will fill. I'm not, this is pretty complicated. I'm not so sure this is going to fill, but we'll see. I'm going to try it here. So, um, yeah, fill. Oh, it did. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So now watch this. So I'm just going to, um, these edge select is a lot easier when it comes to this. Hold the shift key down. Select all my edges here. See, I'm closing it. Fill. OK, so now I've got this set up, and I've got it looking pretty good. Now what I can do is I can right click on this, and I'm just going to bring that down. So there's the channel that we were talking about. I can move this over, make it a little bit more dramatic. OK. Now I'm noticing that it's not perfectly straight. If I go up to the straight up and down, uh, hit 7, you can see that I need to move some point. It's all slanted to the right here. So I'm going to go to vertices, and I'm going to click these and try to make them as straight up and down as possible. Again, we want to be, you know, you, it's good. Figure these things out now until the, before the model is too complicated because <laughs> it gets a lot harder to do to make these things neater once the model gets really complicated. Um, so now I've got that. Let's switch back to edge select mode. And then I'm just going to take this, 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 all of these. I held the option key down and I selected. And you notice it selected like the whole thing. And now I can just bring this all down. Pretty cool, huh? OK. Now I need to do some fancy stuff here, but that's actually not too hard. Vertices across, fill, F again to fill the, the actual face right here. Fill that, and then fill again, and kind of see how it's starting to work out here. It's starting to look actually pretty darn good. Um, <clears throat> and what I might do, again, is take these all of this down just a little bit like that, okay? Just to make that a little thinner. And then what I'll do is I'll hit those, that one across. And then let's see if it fills this. I'm not sure it will. It's a lot of points to, oh, it, it filled it. So you can kind of see how I've got a little bump there. And now I can fill this end in here, the F key. And now I need to fill in uh, this right here. See that where this is all? And this is going to be the interesting part because of how it works. And I'd have to probably play with this a little longer than I want to do it for the demo. Um, but let's just, uh, let's just assume, which is always a dangerous proposition, right? that this will be good enough. So now I'm basically filling, probably want to move, whoops, move this one down too so that it matches that. Select all my vertices, my edges, hit the F key again, and now I've got the start of a good 
key. Now, I wouldn't say that it's absolutely perfect, okay? There's definitely pieces of it that probably could use a lot of work, but it looks really good. If I go and I take my um, subsurface modifier uh, and I throw that on there, you'll see that it kind of goes all blobby. But then once I start doing some edge creasing, especially, you know, along the key, I think it would look really, really, really good. Okay, so the whole point of this demo is sometimes with a really complicated outline, it's easier to just start drawing the points. So I just start with a plane, I delete a couple points, and then I start using the E key to extrude, which basically copies the point, and I start building in two dimensions the outline of an object. And then once I get that outline done and filled, then I can extrude it vertically to actually create the three-dimensional part of the, of the outline. And thinking ahead, if you think three or four or five or six steps ahead, and that was the key, especially when it came to the little, the little channels and divots and stuff like that here, is to think several steps ahead so that I understood how many of certain things I needed and how many of this I needed and all that sort of stuff, that really made the big, a big difference because I was able to create the key and do so very easily without too many problems. Does that make sense to everybody? So, I mean, a lot of times the method that you choose to start modeling your, your object will actually um, depend on uh, what kind of an object it is and how complicated it is and you know like the toaster was even easy because I it started with a, it was a cube a toaster is basically a cube so I started with a cube and I just modified the cube okay well here a key it's a lot harder than a cube so in this case it was just easier to draw the outline and and go with it does that make sense all right enough said